I remember the first Lars von Trier film I watched was Antichrist. Back then, I was just a teen, and the opening scene was definitely a test to see if I can sit through the entire film. A lot of sex, but also a lot of disturbing imagery with that. Most people I know when I mention Lars von Trier have only seen Nymphomaniac, and usually they stop at volume 1. I know film people in particular I watch online or went to school with usually don't like his films. Some of it has to do with the subject matter in his films. The other side just doesn't agree with him as a director or public figure. I want to do a deep dive on Lars von Trier, the creator, and explore his most popular films and Trier's legacy as a controversial filmmaker. Lars von Trier was born on April 30th. 1956 in Denmark. As a young child, Lars von Trier was often on his own, unnoticed by his parents. Also, my parents said nothing. I could come home. No, so I said, "I was late, late, mark to." Then I came home. I was there. Yeah. And so was it just like that? Yeah. So was it. So they. And what did that mean? That you just came and went as you wanted? Nej, det gjorde det jo så ikke, fordi at, at, øh, jeg tror, det der med, at man selv laver sine egne regler. Så hvis du ikke har et regelsæt, det ved du med religionen og det der, hvis man ikke har et regelsæt, så må man lave et selv. For ellers så skrider det hele. He learned discipline on his own, while also suffering major anxiety for as long as he could remember. Den der sygdomsangst der, ikke? hvor langt tilbage, hvornår kan du huske, den begyndte at dukke op? Jeg kan tydeligt huske, det var, at jeg så fjernsyn. Jeg har været fem år eller sådan noget lignende. Så så jeg fjernsyn, og så så jeg sådan en udsendelse fra et hospital. Og min angst går i virkeligheden mere på behandlingssystemet, end det går på, på selve sygdommen ikke? og død og så videre. Men det er så ødelæggende, sådan livsødelæggende sådan noget angst. Ja. Enten ellers kunne jeg trådte i karakter og sige, at øh, jeg ikke døde om natten. Du ved det der med, at, øh, at jeg spurgte min mor, skal jeg dø i nat? Og så siger hun, chancen er meget lille, men du forelægger. Ja. At 14 years old, Lars worked with 8mm film and had a very strong fascination for film technology. Between 1979 and 1982, Lars attended the Danish film school in Copenhagen. Trier's graduation film, Images of Relief, from 1982, tells the story of a German soldier and his experiences during the day when the Allies liberated Denmark. On its release, the film was considered controversial due to the debate that surrounded it. It gave Lars von Trier the reputation of romanticizing Nazism. By the age of 25, he was winning awards at international film festivals of film schools, and in 1984, The Element of Crime, Von Trier's breakthrough film, received 12 awards at seven international film festivals. He eventually made his way to Cannes Film Festival with Epidemic in 1987, and then Europia in 1991. Dogma of 95 was a movement that Lars von Trier co-founded with Thomas Vintenberg. Basically, it was a collective of film directors founded in Copenhagen in the spring 1995. It outlined the vow of chastity. The vow of chastity. 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 <clears throat> they outlined the vow of chastity, a set of rules by which filmmakers can create work that combats the industry's most prevalent issues. This includes. 1. Shooting must be performed on location, without providing props or sets that don't logically exist within that setting. 2. Diegetic sound only. Sounds must never be produced, such as music that does not exist within the scene. 3. All shots must be handheld. Movement, immobility, and stability must be attained by hand. 4. The film must be in color, with no special lighting. 5. There can be no optical work or lens filters. 6. No superficial action, such as staged murders, elaborate stunts, etc. 7. Geological alienation is strictly forbidden, meaning the film must take place here and now. 8. No genre movies. 9. Academy 35mm is the only accepted film format. 10. 
directors must not be credited. Dogma 95's main goal was to focus on the values of traditional storytelling, performance, and specific themes. Dogma 95 was a backlash against over-reliance on technology, such as special effects and groundbreaking digital tools. The Celebration, written and directed by Thomas Vintenberg, was the first one to launch this manifesto. Following that was Lars von Trier's The Idiots. Although his film, Breaking the Waves, had elements of dogma, Dogma 95 reached out to other filmmakers around the world, even Harmony Corinne, who actually did many roles in his film, Julian Donkey Boy. The movement eventually ended in 2005, most likely due to people not using 35mm anymore. Dancer in the Dark wouldn't be considered a part of the dogma list of films due to it being a genre film, a musical. Although it subverts the Hollywood musical idea and puts it in a more Lars von Trier way, meaning much more darker and truthful in its storytelling. And then I don't feel so The film stars artist Bjork, playing a character by the name of Selma, who struggles hard to make her living in America while suffering a disease that turns her blind. In October of 2017, Bjork put out a Facebook post talking about her experience on Dancer in the Dark and working with Lars von Trier. She quotes, In the spirit of the hashtag me too, I would like to lend women around the world a hand with a more detailed description of my experience with a Danish director. It feels extremely difficult to come out with something of this nature into the public, especially when immediately ridiculed by offenders. I fully sympathize with everyone who hesitates, even for years. But I feel it is the right time, especially now when I could make a change. Here comes a list of the encounters that I think I count as sexual harassment. 1. After each take, the director ran up to me and wrapped his arms around me for a long time in front of the whole crew or alone and struck me sometimes for minutes against my wishes. 2. When after two months of this, I said he had to stop the touching, he exploded and broke a chair in front of everyone on set like someone who has always been allowed to fondle his actresses. Then we all got sent home. 3. During the whole filming process, there were constant awkward, paralyzing, unwanted, whispered sexual offers from him with graphic descriptions, sometimes with his wife standing next to us. 4. While filming in Sweden, he threatened to climb from his room's balcony over to mine in the middle of the night with a clear sexual intention. While his wife was in the room next door, I escaped to my friend's room. This was what finally woke me up to the severity of all this and made me stand my ground. 5. Fabricated stories in the press about me being difficult by his producer. This matches beautifully with the Weinstein methods and bullying. I have never eaten a shirt, not even sure if that's possible. 6. I didn't comply or agree on being sexually harassed. That was then portrayed as me being difficult. If being difficult is standing up to be treated like that, I'll own it. Hope. Let's break this curse. Warmth. Bjork. Lars denies these allegations, but quotes, That was not the case. We were definitely not friends, and that's a fact. People began to ask other actresses about this Me Too with Lars von Trier. Chloe Seventy, who worked on Dogville, defended Trier in quotes, I was not harassed. I adore that man. Dunst and Gainsbourg, who also defended him. Kinman, however, defended Lars back in 2003. First of all, what, I mean, I, I always believe in judging somebody um, based on your experience with them. Obviously, Lars has um, a... Uh, you know, d different people have said many different things about him. My relationship with him um, was very, very good. I mean, we I arrived in Sweden and um, the first week was tricky, our rehearsal week. Oh, no, he looks offended. But retracted statements saying that she almost tried to quit the film three times and that Lars would get drunk and abusive and sexually harass her to filming of Dogville. He responded to Kidman's allegation with, I did what? Well, again, as with Peter, it sounds likely. But Nicole was ready to come back and do more films with me 
so it can't have shocked her very much. But yeah, it's a crazy business, and it was a little bit of our lives as well. Regardless, the working conditions between Bjork and Trier weren't good, but the film made its way to 2000 Cannes Film Festival. Bjork was awarded Best Actress, and since then, Dancer in the Dark has remained her best role. However, since then, she has renounced acting. He went on to make Dogville, starring Nicole Kidman. Dogville was avant-garde, with its filmmaking style and setting taking place on a soundstage. It follows a mysterious girl who is hiding from a team of gangsters. She hides out in an American town and tries to win people's favors until an outsider provokes the townspeople into thinking she's something else. Overall, the film was divided amongst critics. Uh, since Breaking the Waves, for the, uh, you've put three movies with three actresses in which the last act of each of the films is torture, torture, torture of the actress, torture, death, hanging, rape, humiliation, and not to my surprise, once again, you have your actors, the actors in chains in the last part, and, 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 and many men sleeping with her, and the usual. So my question is very is simple. Why, um, why do all your movies have, have actresses tortured in the last act? What is that all about? And why women? Why women? Why women? Well, it's, I, I, I don't think it's that exciting when it's men that are tortured, you know. In 2004, Roger Ebert, amongst others, noticed the film's anti-American message. However, the film has ranked its way to being one of the best films of its time. Tura went on to do part two of Dogville called Philanderlay in 2005. Kidman was replaced by Bryce Dallas Howard and introduced William Defoe, who replaced James Cann. It's rumored that during production, a donkey was slaughtered for dramatic purposes. Because of this, actor John C. Riley quit his role. The scene was then cut out from the film before it was released, so there's no actual proof of this, I guess. And after that, the Depression Trilogy came to be. Starting off the Depression Trilogy is Antichrist, starring William Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsbourg. Lars had written the film in 2006 after being hospitalized due to a depressive episode. The film was influenced by his struggles with mental illness such as depression and anxiety that he must deal with every day. It follows a couple who face an unexpected tragedy in their life of losing a child. The entire movie shows how a husband who is also a therapist can treat a mother slash wife during their grieving process. Originally, Lars von Trier thought of the film as a horror film due to its dark subject matter and being influenced by Japanese horror, but he mostly just describes it as a strange film with horror elements. Antichrist was originally scheduled for production in 2005, but the executive producer accidentally revealed the film's planned revelation the Earth was created by Satan and not by God. Von Trier was furious and decided to delay the shoot so he could rewrite the script. But he eventually came back and shot the film, and it went back to the 2006 Cannes Film Festival, mostly divided audiences and several walkouts. Please, for my benefit, explain and justify why you made this movie. I don't, I don't think I have to justify Yes, you do. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. This is a Cannes Film Festival and you bought your film here and you have to explain why you made it. Please do so. Thank you. I don't have very much to say. I don't feel... Uh, I, I think it's a very strange question that, that I have to... Uh, to excuse myself. I, I, I don't feel that. I'm... You know, you are all my guests. It's not the other way around. That's how I feel. It's the hand of God, I'm afraid. And I am the best. In 2011, Melaconlia came out starring Kristen Dunst, Charlotte Gainsbourg, Keith Sutherland, and Alexander Skarsgård. The film is also narrated by John Hurt. It's a strange science fiction film about two sisters and their strained relationship. While this goes on, a mysterious new planet threatens to collide with the Earth as both sisters must face this existential crisis. The idea for the film came to be during a therapy session Lars von Trier attended during treatments for his depression. A therapist had told Trier that depressive people tend to act more calmly than others under heavy pressure 
because they already expect bad things to happen. Quantra then developed the story about the human psyche during a disaster. Lars also quotes that he had written characters in the story for actress Penelope Cruz. The two sisters were inspired by Cruz and Lars, but due to scheduling conflicts, Cruz was replaced by Kristen Dunst, who had also experienced depression herself. Trier wrote he had started to regret making such a polished film, but he had hoped it would contain some flaws that would make it more interesting. In the press conference at Cannes Film Festival, Lars made a series of comments that struck controversy. Also about your interest in the Nazi aesthetic, and you talked mm -hmm. about- I thought I was a Jew for a long time, and was very happy being a Jew. Um, then, later on came Susanna Beer, and then suddenly I wasn't so happy about being a Jew. Uh, no, that was a joke. Sorry. Uh, and, I, and then I found out that I was really a Nazi, you know, uh, because my family was German. I, I understand Hitler. But, uh, but I, there will come a point at the, at the end of this. Okay, I'm a Nazi. All these journalists have been for you to say, okay, I'm a Nazi. I said that I, 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 I don't really remember it. I said, I, I, uh, I felt that there was a good atmosphere and I had this terrible thing that I want to entertain people, which is of course nothing I should do because I'm not a professional. I don't consider myself to be a Nazi or I am not a Nazi. Oh, yeah. Because of that, Lars von Trier was banned from Cannes Film Festival until 2018. Overall, the film was well received by critics and Dunst received the Best Actress Award at the closing ceremony at Cannes Film Festival. Some magazines play Melancholia to be the best film of the 2010s. The last addition to the Depression trilogy would be Nymphomania, a story of a self-proclaimed nymphomaniac, Charlotte Gainsbourg's sexual awakening. Most people think of the film as a foreign film, in some ways they are correct, but it's more a soft core. Bontra used digital compositioning to superimpose the genitals of pornographic film actors onto the bodies of the film's actors. The film makes several references to other films in the trilogy, but even references Bontra's comments at the 2011 Cannes Film Festival during a scene available in the director's cut only. Jo says she could understand dictators such as Hitler after she showed sympathy for racists and pedophiles. The pedophile who manages to get through life with the shame of his desire, while never acting on it, deserves a bloody medal. Since then, Gainsborough character Joe has been referred to as a proto-fascist heroine. The film was split into two parts due to its extremely long length. Lars von Trier aborted the press and premieres after his controversy about joking about being a Nazi. His vow of silence, if you want to call it that. When the seagulls follow the trawler, <laughs> it is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mostly during the release of the film, Von Trier was working on himself by attending AA meetings for his alcohol intake. Lars Von Trier says about Nymphomaniac prior towards getting funding for the film, quote, It's a discussion about the word itself. It's about the erotic evolution of woman from the age of 12 to the age of 50. If you know the works of Marcus de Soie, it's partly sex, partly intellectual thought. Originally supposed to be a television series, the last film to date by Lars von Trier is 2018's The House That Jack Built. This is also the year von Trier was allowed to return to Cannes Film Festival once again after six years. The House That Jack Built follows a serial killer, Matt Dillon, in the period of the 1970s and 80s. The film was inspired by Dante's Inferno, and Dillon's performance was inspired by serial killer Ted Bundy. He makes films that are not like other films. Um, I had worked with Stellan Skarsgård as a director, and, and he always spoke very highly of him, so. I found it very hard to watch, especially when children are being killed. What did you think when you first saw it? Well, I didn't want to see the film when I finished it. Lars von Trier took inspiration from real events, and even quoted that it paralleled with the Donald Trump winning in 2016. Despite more than 100 walkouts, 
by the audience members when initially screened at Cannes Film Festival, the film received a 10-minute standing ovation. The film is considered a masterpiece or even hated. Lars von Trier is an interesting person to say the least, even though various interviews of him opening up about his depression and anxiety, which of course is a very brave thing to do, especially if you have more severe. I still feel this strange wall he has built up. I feel like I know him better through his art more than his dumb comments that may be uncomfortable jokes. I think it may have been good for him to take that foul silence, because then he was able to get his ego in check and work on himself to be a better person or make better movies. Lars von Trier is considered one of my favorite working filmmakers these days. His films are so brave to me and truthful. Of course, they can be very violent. I believe Von Trier isn't trying to be a shock value filmmaker, but more so trying to get a certain feeling or thought into action. I hope he keeps making films he wants to make. It's a very fortunate thing to be able to be as talented as he is and still get funding for his films after his controversies. I even believe Dogma 95 movement still exists today even though 35mm isn't as common. As an independent filmmaker myself, those set of limitations are something to always overcome. You don't need a big production to create a great story. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe down below. I want to hear your thoughts on Lars von Trier. Are you one of those people that hate him or do you like him? Give this video a like and please subscribe for more content about controversial filmmakers.